And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Orzhov Sacrifice and Best of One. We got three Best of One decks to finish out the day with. As you can see here, I do have the full uh, sideboard here also. So if you uh, want to play the deck in Best of Three, there's a you know sideboard to go along with the deck. Um, and I'll have a sideboard with each deck also. But we're going to be playing in Best of One. Of course, as you all know, um, we have today and tomorrow, we're going to be doing a lot of best of one because then Tuesday I will be um, getting the rest of the parts for my brand new computer and I'll be taking Tuesday off, building that. Wednesday we'll have the new computer ready to go. But for now, um, but for now, it's still, we have some lag problems at different points and playing best of one. It helps minimize that. So that's, that's what we're going to be doing here. Um, yeah, this deck, so this deck is one that we've played a few times before. It's really just a machine gun deck. All we're trying to do is just machine gun down the opponent. We're not really even, like, we, get, we can get some attacks in, but it's not really about attacking. It's just about uh, doing 20 damage with triggers, with Cauldron Familiar. Each time it enters, they lose a life, we gain a life. Corpse Knight, whenever any creature enters, they lose a life. Cruel Celebrant, whenever any of our creatures die they lose a life, we gain a life. And a Yara, whenever a black creature enters, they lose a life, we gain a life. So these four cards are what the deck's built around. And just trying to machine gun down the opponent for 20 damage there. Sorry. Um, even the Priests of Forgotten Gods can make them lose two life by sacrificing a couple creatures as well. Um, <clears throat> Hunted Witness is like... I don't know, kind of good, but also kind of bad. It's it's kind of awkward at times. Sorry. My throat, it's like I got something caught in my throat. All right, hopefully that's better. Not really. Man, I'm just so choked up about this Orzhov Sacrifice deck. One more. Okay. All better. Um, but yeah, so the thing about Hunted Witness is it's really great with Priest of Forgotten Gods because, like, costing one man is really why we're playing this card. Lazotep Re Reaver is also pretty good, but it costs two, and we have we already have 12 other two drops and a lot of three drops, and I just wanted an extra one drop, and so that's why we have Hunted Witness in here. The, pro the big problem with Haunted Witness is it's a white creature that makes a white token, and so neither of those trigger a Yara. And so that's that's kind of the problem there with Haunted Witness, that one thing. But besides that, it works great with Priest. It only costs one mana. It's really good with Midnight Reaper and Corpse Knight and Cruel Celebrant and, and everything else, really. Everything else with the deck is really good with. It's just kind of annoying that it doesn't trigger a Yara. Hey, what's up, Artemis? Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Um, uh, Gruesome Menagerie is, of course, kind of like our top-end card to kind of bring all these things back. If you can bring back a Yara and Corpse Knight and Cauldron Familiar all together, if you can bring back all three of those, you get six triggers. It so deals six to them. Um, also, I guess seven triggers. You get three for a Yara, three for Corpse Knight, <clears throat> and one for Cauldron Familiar. So I guess you get seven triggers. So you can do a lot of damage to them. Uh, playing the one rankle over the fourth hunted witness. Whenever we first started with this deck, we had we just had four hunted witness, but taking out one hunted witness just to have like this rankle that can be a flyer and uh, get some damage in for us and just do a lot of good stuff. And of course, Soren can bring things back. Soren, particularly with Midnight Reaper, works really well. But all right, enough talking. Let's get to the games. Orzov sacrifice. So we're going to go standard ranked. So we're just going to be playing seven games in ranked. I did nine earlier with mono red because it was a donation deck. So I want to do a little bit more than just the seven. But to finish out the day, we'll do seven games with each one of these decks. That's what we usually do with our best of one decks. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's right. Corpse Knight doesn't trigger itself. So it is six. I thought it was six. But yeah, that's true. Corpse Knight is a another. It doesn't trigger on itself. Good call. Well, his hand looks good. This isn't a great Witch's Oven hand, I guess. Like, if we gotta, gotta get rid of something. 
Sure, I'll keep the third lane. Oh, no, no, yeah. We're not trying to play Hunted Witness on turn one. Like, that's, that's not really... It's a one drop that you get to double spell with, you know, like you can you can play witness plus something else right away kind of thing. It's it, you don't need it on turn 1. This that's not that important. I didn't want my Corpse Knight to get quenched. I, I wanted to see like if they would counter the Hunted Witness first. Hmm. I do get to play Cutthroat because I didn't pressure their counter magic. But I guess that was that was a reason to pressure the counter magic was Cutthroat. And they had the quench. All right. Well, this that was just a great, great hand for the opponents. And I, I played, I basically played the worst I could into their hands. Basically. By attacking there, like they had to have, you know, Bone Crusher plus quench, or they did. <clears throat> That resolves. That's good. Hopefully no dragon fire. Alright, at least we get to draw a card. Really good to see the power of Bone Crusher Giant here in this game. Very good card. Well, Witch's Oven was awesome. That was a great draw. Come on, computer. Come on. There it goes. So basically just kind of teaming up here because we're going to need to get rid of these things anyway. Celebrant. Pretty nice. Yeah, this is just a really good combo with getting the Celebrant and the Witch's Oven Cauldron Familiar thing going. Wow, Resolve. Ooh, boy. That's good.
So I wonder if they have the fourth Bone Crusher. Kind of feels like that's what they kept. I don't I don't know what that means, Deacon. Oh, just a brazen borrower? Oh, I shouldn't attack with the Cauldron Familiar. <clears throat> but it's fine. Yeah, this actually, this just kills him. Well, I don't. That doesn't. That doesn't help me at all, Deacon. I don't know what run a n stat minus zero n on your machine or run a n stat minus zero n your machine. I don't. I don't know what those words mean. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, this way it's just being replaced in two days. Like, if they attack, if they don't have removal for Cruel Celebrant and they attack, they die. Because I'll just bring back Cauldron Familiar, which does three damage, and then block, which does another two damage. So they lose five life if they attack and cannot kill Celebrant. But they just kind of lose if they can't kill Celebrant anyway. That is them attacking. That's probably them dying. Okay, they do have removal for a celebrant. So they're not dead yet. Yet. Wait, yeah, they are. Never mind. Never mind, they are dead. The Witches of Indra won me that game. That was definitely the card that won me that game, drawing that Witches of when I did. No, you, I don't think you can have 32 lands. I mean, you could try, Uki Hob, you could just go ahead and, um, you know, shuffle up your EDH deck and. You know, draw seven cards and see how it looks and everything. I guess EDH you do have the free you have the free mulligan, so that also helps. But I I still think that you probably want like 36, 37, 38 lands, not not 32. But if you're happy with 32, you can go for it.
So I guess I, if I play Cauldron Familiar, if they just play Legion's End and Exile Cauldron Familiar, I kind of lose. So I should just lead with Witch's Oven first, even though that means I don't get to attack on turn two. That's a better option than losing the game. They really need to just do this auto sack food thing. Like just just sack of food. Like these extra clicks and everything is what why people don't like Cauldron Familiar. It really doesn't need to be as as slow as it is. Yeah, commander is a hundred card deck, but one of one of the cards is your commander, so it's really a ninety nine card deck. But still, like a, a twenty three land standard deck is like a thirty eight land commander deck. And we're back to 20. After I put my taxes for four. I'm going to play seven games in best of one. So I could sac if I sacrifice the priest. They don't get the Murderous Rider, but they also don't lose the two life. I think I like them losing the two life. Yeah, that's that's what this deck is. Death by a thousand cuts. Yep. Bring this back now. Maybe we have better luck drawing a land. Come on. <laughs> uh, there's no lands. It's going to make this a lot harder to win. I feel like if I Murderous Rider and kill the, the Questing Beast, they're going to play another one. Oh, cool. They got the Fancy Fox. Alright, looks like they, they got this. The sounds of the wild. Obviously, there's just too many turns of you picked the wrong fight. not having mana.
the questing beast really wasn't a problem. We are gonna pretty easily out outrace questing beasts. It's this, it's this the Great Henge, and then Vivian. The questing beast was whatever. Like they've already gained six life with the Great Henge. No, or maybe it's just four life actually. Actually, but I have to like murderous rider the I have to like swift end the murderous rider probably because this thing gives it trample. The Vivian giving that thing trample is a problem. And I'm just moving on. Yeah, just our, our three one drops were <laughs> keeping us in the game for a long time. If it wasn't for, like, if it, yeah, that's that's the one thing that that really beat us there was that that the great henge. If it wasn't for the great henge, I liked our chances. Can we just get two lands? Why do I have to say that? Had to say, can't we just get two lands? <laughs> we need white mana. Come on, deck. Where's a godless shrine when you need one? Yeah, Mono Black's definitely more consistent. It doesn't have the, the power that Orzhov does. We saw the, the Cruel Celebrants won us that last game against the Is It Flash. Like, if the Cruel Celebrants were just like other Black 2 drops, we were not winning that. All right, Temple's good. It helps us look for another white source. Because, yeah, all these death triggers with the celebrants with the lose life, gain life is the only reason why we won that last one. I wonder if this is Teamer Adventure or Teamer... Or Teamer Reclamation. I guess it could really be either. Gosh, they still had another land drop? Ugh. So I'm playing a Yara because a Yara doesn't die to Bone Crusher Giants. So I'm going to play a Yara. Even though it, it would be nice just to to play a Celebrant or a Corpse Knight to use my one white mana. Okay, it's Adventure.
So I have 10 mana compared to my four. What are they bouncing? Bouncing the food food token? All right, I think they're bouncing the food token. It's not that great of a choice. Which one? So this one? Yeah, that one. Now their Brazen Borrower is just going to fizzle also. They would just do them the other way around so that... So it wouldn't fizzle. They're just like, look at all these cards we have. We can just fizzle these things. It doesn't matter. All this mana and cards. So we just need to get nine more triggers. Oh, good move. Hunter Witness is pretty good, but I guess I'm probably going to want to go Corpse Knight, Celebrant. Maybe we can draw another White Source, though. I'll just put it at the bottom. Uh, that last song that we just had, that was Landside, Land Slide, by Young Blood Hawk and Vice Tone. Going down to seven. It's risky. So I kind of have to kill them this turn because I'm going to die. But I think I can. Pretty sure I can.
Yeah, no problem, Deacon. Uh, could not have that. I mean, they're still pretty dead, I guess. I guess it's not that big a deal. Oh, I should have let them do the other Brazen Borrower target first. I guess it doesn't really matter what they choose, though. Alright, I'm hoping to draw a land here. Did not draw the land. Needed the land. Darn. So they had, bunk they had two interaction spells with that four mana. Man, so close. Yeah, that's so close. We had uh, two more draws to draw land with the, the Midnight Reaper didn't hit a land, and we need them to not have that bounce, them having that bounce spell for my Witch's Oven. Need one of those things to happen. But it didn't. Oh well. We just never have white mana, do we? That was a really bad draw, the Soren. Of course. Probably our worst draw. Now just please draw white mana. Or Cauldron Familiar. One of the two. Really just white mana. Bleh. 
Yay. Yeah, our first one's gonna be Temple of Silence. It's not the worst to sacrifice a corpse knight because we get to bring we can bring it back with all these things. So I can sacrifice it like to a Yara to draw a card, for example. Oh, come on. Frostbite, also with how my computer is right now, just best of my computer can handle best of one a lot better than best of three right now for the next two days. So today, tomorrow, we're doing a lot of best of one because of that. But tomorrow is our normal best of one day. You know, normally, we do all best of one on best of one day Monday, but we're doing it today too. Grumpy cat. Happy cat. Well, that's probably game. No, I'm not streaming building the PC, no. I'm probably going to need to... I mean, I just have these two monitors that this PC is. I'm probably going to need these monitors on the other PC and stuff, too. To put it together and, and stuff. And No, I'm not doing... I'm not going to be streaming it. All right, I shouldn't have cut that hand. That was that was a bad keep on me. Bad keep. The yeah, Mayhem Devils. The tough card to beat in the Sacrifice Mirror. No, no white man in this deck. I like this deck a lot. We've we've done a lot. We've always done better than than this. This has been our worst record that so far that we've had with the deck with three losses with you know one and three here. Um, we've been kind of on on a little unlucky. In some spots, we went unlucky with mana. One of the games we were just so close to winning, but didn't get there. You think like one of these games we'd be able to draw lands? We're playing twenty-two lands. So it's not like we're playing, you know, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, like. 
I think one of these games, we would keep a land light hand and we would draw lands. I think it would happen once. This is an amazing hand for our opponent. Innkeeper into removal into removal into you know these these things to draw a whole bunch of cards. This is just a great hand for them. Like if they have Ember Cleave also, it's it's game, but still innkeeper is gonna draw them a whole lot of cards. It's just so much better mana wise to just play the play the Midnight Reaper instead of playing Witch's Oven, even though it would be really nice to have oven in play to be able to chump block and then sacrifice. I guess they have Ember Cleave. That's great. That was a perfect hand for that deck. It really doesn't get any better than what my opponent had. And we only had one of our two colors again. Hey, Soul Farmer. You have a 50% chance of hitting your fourth land drop on turn four with 22 lands. That's. Yeah, we've hit the under on that like every single game. Okay, we got a Goblet Shrine here this time, so that's cool. It's not really activating priest here with this hand. If they had a creature that that they would be able to just block the cauldron familiar, I'd just be leaving it over here in exile to try to play a yar and then get another Trigger. Hey, Rex. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people have. Yeah, we've had pretty low viewership this weekend, but that's okay. So I'm playing the Midnight Reaper first to, to draw cards. Be able to hit more land drops. And get more things to play. So doing that before Ayara. So I think this is like a, a flash deck where I think I'm just going to go to attackers and attack with both of these. They play Ambusher. I have the Murderous Rider to, to kill it.
If not, then second main I play a Yara. Yeah. I forgot we had planes in this deck. Extra card. All right, still gonna go Yara here with us having another planes because this takes all my black sources because I could double spell with Midnight Reaper and Priest of Forgotten Gods next turn. I should have brought back the familiar, dealt another point damage. Whoops. Oh yeah, I should have brought back the familiar there. I guess I would rather, if if they have Frilled Mystic, I would rather them counter a Yara than Midnight Reaper. With us having the two Ayara, so we'll lead with a Yara. Yeah, I missed out on one point of damage there. Which this deck, at each point of damage is important. Each point of damage is pretty important here with this deck. I missed out on one there. That's a pretty aggressive attack. Murder Re or Midnight Reaper it is. Mm 
I like getting that thing out of there. That thing could, you know, draw more cards and everything and be an annoying card to deal with. We'll get it out of here. Wow, there's staying aggressive. All right, Deacon. Take care. This is annoying that I can't play two two spells at all. It's pretty annoying. I definitely think they just have another... Like, their plan is Ambusher if I attack, and now I don't have an answer to Ambusher. good. Speaking of good, I'll take the land. All right, worked out for us. my best draw. I was just getting a swamp. So four points of damage. That's all we got to do. Yay. Head exploded. All right. Luck kind of turning around there a little bit. We actually had lands. Been a while since we had lands. Got to play our spells. Got to play our hand. So that's good. Oh, really, Chris? I think this deck's pretty fun. I mean, I think, I think my opponent just kind of played, kind of slow there, which, you know, happens and stuff. But that's why. It seemed like. Um, like that, but no, this, this deck's pretty exciting. Like the things you get to do with having, um, with having Corpse Knight and Cruel Celebrant in play with Witch's Oven and Cauldron Familiar and stuff, you get to do some really exciting stuff with this deck. There we go. This is a good hand. We actually get white mana. So we'll go, uh, I do like a Yara, but we already got one. So we'll go Corpse Knight into a Yara, into Celebrant Hunted Witness. Hmm. I don't like Mountain, though. Ugh. Mountain means shock. I don't like shock with my two toughness creatures. Boo. Yeah, not your style. That's okay. Yeah, that's that's a great part about magic. There's different decks for everybody. Well, darn. What 
kind of Chinese food do I usually get? I usually just get um, like sesame chicken and orange chicken. I'd say those are probably my my go-to Chinese food orders. Um, but I also like, you know, if you if you start going over to uh, Thai food, then I love getting like cashew chicken and um, gross. Like just lots of things with shrimp. So all the dishes with shrimp also are always good. Low main? Oh, definitely. Sorry about lag issues. This will hopefully be... Well, it should all be taken care of in two days. We just got today and tomorrow. There it goes. I can kind of wait for them to use a removal spell on one of these things, and then whatever they use the removal spell on, then I, I just sacrifice that to the oven that, that brings back the Cauldron Familiar. <laughs> yeah, the, the old Cavalcade Burn deck. Cavalcade doesn't do a whole lot with when you just pair it with a, only removal. Yeah, they, they didn't draw a single creature. Like a... Oh, that's true. Yeah, we, we did sacrifice. That's true, because we made a food. So, yeah, so we sacrificed the corpse knight. I wonder what the odds of them drawing 14 cards and no creatures. Seven lands, five burn spells, and two cavalcades. So seven lands, seven spells. No creatures. Wow, that's got to be frustrating. But that's another game of us hitting land drops, and then we win. So I think we found... We have found the key to the puzzle. Hit land drops, then win. All right, but that's our seven games. We'll go on to our next deck. Yeah, that was pretty anticlimactic of a match um so yeah we only went three and four this time but like i said we played this a couple other times and, and did better with it but we just really we just had like a few games there of just some pretty bad mana troubles which ha which you know happens like it's it's magic it happens um but i i really like playing this deck i think this is a, a fun deck because i like the whole machine gun aspect of all of these cards um added together uh we didn't do anything basically with our top end these five cards here basically never played them. I don't. I don't know if we like really. Yeah, I don't. We never really played any of them. This that was how it went. But the the games that we actually hit land drops that we hit three, four, five land drops. We we won those games for the most part. There was the one that was real close against the teamer deck that we had one more turn to kill them, but we didn't quite get it done. Um. There we go. That's Orzhov's Sacrifice. 
a pretty sweet deck here. All right, those of y'all watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that like button over there, of course, and please leave some comments. Let me know how, uh, you know, just leave some comments. Feel free to do that too. That always helps with uh, the videos. But thanks for watching some Orzov Sacrifice, and I'll see you for the next video. Some Mardu enchantments.